Okay, so in our previous demonstrations, we looked at um, how to draw the grid onto the paper and how to draw onto your reference image and how to draw the grid onto your drawing paper. Okay, we also looked at how to use the grid just to get our basic outline shape and how that can help you, guiding you through how the line cuts through each of the grid boxes. And then we took it a little bit further if you need a little bit of extra support how you can use the dot to dot technique to draw again your line drawing wherever the dividing line between the positive and negative shape hits the grid line and you put a dot and then you look at the type of line that joins up those two dots okay so that's the first two techniques when on how to use the grid to support you to get an accurate line drawing just to recap on our HPL focus, the words that we want to be repeating in our head and helping us um, push forward and get a really good uh, drawing um, while we work. So the first one is a VAA, which is hard working and in particular perseverance. So the bullet points that kind of come up in that are don't give up, constantly say this, these in your head to yourself, persist in effort, Use a strategy. Our strategy is our grid, the different techniques, the different strategies I'm showing. Work diligently. So don't become complacent. Work through the system, work through the strategy and push through that, those moments where you just kind of want to give up. And then don't be satisfied until you get a high quality outcome and the desired um, outcome that you would like. Okay, and then the next thing is an ACP, so an XHPL focus meta thinking and in particular self-regulation so we've been looking at this quite a lot this month we're going to monitor throughout our work so constantly checking and monitoring the accuracy of our drawing then we're going to self-evaluate and um, you can just do this verbally or you can jot it down for yourself this will be helpful for when you're writing your annotations because you can remember your process then and then self-correct where needed we did talk about our relevant art elements in this particular task so we obviously have the dot function so that will help you the dot is the beginning of a line so this is a dot when you join up loads of dots together it becomes a line okay then we also have a line okay so we're looking at that dividing line between the positive and negative space okay we talked about space positive and negative space positive space being the space that is filled the negative space is the empty space. We talked about how in the 3D world, it's called space. When it's gone down to a 2D image, it becomes a shape, okay? We talked about how shapes can be geometric or organic and how our shapes are in this particular image. For me, they're organic mainly, okay? And you can just see the connection between all of these art elements in that when a dot joins, it becomes a line. When a line joins, it becomes a shape. And then when the space goes from 3D to 2D, it turns from a space to a shape. Okay, so they are our main art elements for this task. As I said, they are the, before you begin any piece of art, always highlight to yourself, okay, what are my main art elements I want to focus on? Okay, so what we're the next thing that I wanna show you is further gridding. Okay, so you would use the further gridding technique in areas that have a lot of detail. Okay, so I'm going to just be looking at the face area in particular, and it's very similar to the way that you did your initial grid, but you're just going to break these boxes up into smaller boxes. Okay, so it'll just help you give you a little bit more guidelines for those detailed areas. So I'm going to break my squares into four. Um, our, as you know, the squares are three by three, three centimeters by three centimeters. So again, lining up with my zero on my ruler and half of three is 1.5. So I'm gonna mark it there. Within each box, I'm gonna mark it twice vertically, 1.5, 1.5. And then I'm going to turn and I'm going to draw my line, joining up the two dashes on my ruler, checking the placement of my pencil and my ruler. Do they meet up with the dashes? They do and then draw my line. On my reference image, as you know, I can draw the line quite detailed or quite heavy, but on my drawing page, I'm gonna be a lot lighter. So then I'm gonna turn the page and I'm gonna do the same this way. So joining up the line with zero 
and then 1.5, which is half of my box, half of three centimeters. And again, 1.5, can I see it sometimes again with if the image is quite dark or detailed to be very particular? Yeah, there we go. So two dashes that I can then join up to make sure that I get an accurate straight line. Checking the placement of my pencil against the ruler and drawing my line. Okay, so now I have four boxes within my one box there. Okay, you can do that in any number of boxes that you feel there's quite a lot of detail. Okay, I'm just gonna show you one for demonstration sake. So you can see that I am in box number seven, C. So I'm gonna to go to my page and seven C is here. So these boxes are 4.5 now. So that's a little bit tricky when I'm going to divide. So always just double check on your calculator if you're not super sure of um, any calculations. So I'm just gonna go onto my calculator, 4.5 divided by two, what does that give me? 2.25, so always double check. There's no harm in that. So 2.25, okay, I'm gonna have to be as precise as possible here. So go to my two centimeters and then one, two, and then in the middle of those two dashes, 2.25, okay. I'm going a little bit heavier than I should just to show you in the video. I'm gonna mark it twice. So you go nice and light on your drawing page. There's my two lines. I'm going to turn, get my ruler, get my two dashes, line them up with the ruler, check the placement of my pencil. You can also check how straight the line, your original grid is against those lines and then very lightly draw your line. And then I'm going to do the same this way, 4.5, half of that is 2.25, so two, one, two, and halfway through those two lines. And then the same here, one, two, and there. And then I'm going to, again, draw my line. Very lightly. Okay, so now I have my further grid here and on my reference image and I can use the exact same technique that we looked at either here or here to draw my details. Okay, so looking at it, I'm in this box and it will just help me. Okay, so I can, again, you can draw onto the reference image if you need to, excuse my pixelated image. I can see that that line comes up probably about a quarter of the way here. Very, I'm going to do my line drawing very light like that and then there's this line here so it seems to be the edge of the face and then I have I just like to draw on top of my reference image just to get a bit of a feel for the detail And then, as I said before, it's an observational drawing, so you need to observe. It's going to be about 60-40. Looking at your image about 60% of the time, you're drawing about 40% of the time just to check the placement of your drawing. And essentially what you're doing is you're drawing around all of the different colours or tones really lightly. Okay. So I can then do that in each of the boxes. Okay, some shapes and lines might go through the boxes and you might feel confident enough to work your way through the boxes and use the grid to help you. Or sometimes you might isolate it to box per box, okay? Or box, one box at a time. So I'm just traveling through this here. As you can see, I'm drawing this line. Like that. And this line like that, okay? And you can continue with each of the boxes, as I said, for your grid. Okay, thanks guys. I hope that's helpful.